Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Muruk Kartik. I'm a research scientist at uh, IPK Karasleban in Germany. And today I'm here to talk about uh, crop genome assemblies. Uh, in this talk, uh, I'm gonna give you an overview of uh, how a crop genome can be assembled and what are the strategies uh, in crop genome assemblies and what is the current trend and how would be the future. So these are the major points uh, we are going to discuss in this talk. Uh, Creating the first reference genome uh, is the first great task uh, in crop genomic research because uh, reference genome, uh, having reference genome, you can have a more opportunity to work with different genomic analysis. So here, uh, what is a reference genome? So reference genome, uh, the simple definition is uh, the genomic sequence that represent a species. But here, uh, the the genotype that is used for a reference genome construction is not really a standard way. Some people would choose popular cultivar as a reference genome, and some people would choose a genotype that is amenable for whole genome sequencing and assembly. If you look at the earlier strategies, so these three are the major strategies that have been followed for genome, crop genomic research. So the first one is like a back paste approach where the genomic DNA can be extracted and then uh, this will be cloned in bags and these bags will be sequenced. But this method is uh, highly laborious. Uh, you need to put a lot of effort and it is also time consuming. And later, the whole genome shotgun approach was developed. So here uh, uh, in this method, uh, the, the genomic DNA can be chopped randomly and these uh, chopped fragments can be amplified and sequenced. In other case, uh, some complex genomes like uh, wheat, uh, they follow a chromosome sorting method where uh, the chromosomes, each chromosomes can be separated using uh, some uh, cytogenetic method. And then uh, these chromosomes can be uh, extracted and uh, they apply either back paste approach or whole genome shotgun paste approach and then they perform genome assemblies separately for each chromosomes. But here, uh, the back paste approach, uh, as I told you, it's really uh, time consuming or laborious. So people mostly prefer to use a uh, whole genome shotgun based approach because uh, now uh, many uh, uh, sequencing machines like uh, Illumina, they use a uh, whole genome shotgun approach and they produce high throughput and highly accurate uh, sequencing data set. So which is really important for uh, whole genome assembly. And now I can sh show you one simple example like how uh, genome assembly can be done using whole genome shotgun based approach. So just assume this is one uh, linear uh, chromosome molecule. And for the uh, uh, first step of uh, genome assembly is I need to sequence uh, this genomic DNA. So for the, in case of uh, whole genome shotgun approach, uh, your uh, DNA can be fragmented. And uh, these fragments uh, can be uh, used for library constructions. Here for genome assemblies, uh, we would prefer two types of uh, libraries. One is a uh, parent, another one is a uh, mate pad. So here the, the case, I mean, uh, sequencing can be done from the both end of the fragments, but the only difference is the uh, size. So in paired and library, uh, the size would be like less than uh, one KB. So typically you would have um, 300 to 500 base pair in size. But in case of uh, mate pair, you'd have larger size, like over uh, 2 KB or 5 KB or up to 10 KB size. So uh, once your libraries are ready, then you can go for assembly. So the first step of uh, genome assembly is a quantic assembly. So where you use the pattern library. So this uh, pattern library can be uh, uh, sub subjected to another, uh, any assembly program. And based on the overlapping, uh, pattern reads, so you would get a contiguous a fragment called a quantics. So this is a major, this is mainly based on the overlapping or reads. So likewise for a single chromosome, so you would have a many, many quantics separated by some sequence cap. And this kind of sequence cap can be filled by adding additional sequencing library like midpair library. So here, uh, these caps can be filled with midpair data. In addition, uh, you can connect uh, this kind of physically closed, closed uh, contact, uh, context with uh, this kind of MedPay information. So because uh, the MedPay gives a long, 
range information. So from this context to this context, you can have a sequence information. So based on this sequence information, you can connect the nearby scaffolds. So by combining this kind of uh, context, we call it uh, scaffolds. So, but still uh, some regions cannot be filled with the sequence data because some that uh, sequence data may not be available in our library. So we usually call that uh, region as a physical gap or usually uh, it's filled with ends. So if you deal with some genomic sequence and if you see uh, some ends in the sequence, uh, it's because of this kind of uh, gaps. Okay, so once your scaffolds are ready, then you can go for uh, chromosome scale assemblies. So uh, for this, we mainly uh, use genetic map or uh, IC. So genetic map is normal uh, genetic linkage map which gives uh, the physical uh, information of each chromosome. The same way HiC is a uh, chromosome confirmation sequencing technology, which also provides uh, physical proximity information. Uh, it, is, it mainly gives the long range, uh, long range uh, information. So we can use this information to order uh, each scaffolds into chromosome level, like uh, we call that as a pseudomolecules. So this is how uh, genome assembly can be achieved to chromosome scale. But uh, this process is not easy for all the genomes. In some cases, uh, you would reach up to scaffold levels and you cannot reach the pseudomolecule levels to do some reason. So up to scaffold levels, uh, we call it a tract genome. But if you have a pseudomolecule, still you can imp improve the pseudomolecules by uh, reducing this kind of physical caps, so you can have a low number of caps or nearly uh, cap-free assemblies. Those kind of assemblies called uh, platinum standard or golden standard assemblies. The best example would be rice. Okay, so here I can show you one simple example uh, for back-based assembly and uh, Illumina uh, short read based assembly. So this example from the Bali genome and the reference genotype is uh, Morex. So here you can see the back paste approach. And uh, usually the assembly quality uh, can be measured with some statistical measure. The best one would be the N50, not the best one. The common one would be N50, SCAP N50. So N50 means like um, over 50% of your assembled quantics or scaffold equal to this size or greater than this size. So usually the scaffold N50 should be in megabase pair scale. So if your assembly has uh, more than 50% of uh, quant scaffolds in more than uh, one MB size, then it's, it's a good indication that your assembly is uh, really good. But here you can see the back paste approach produced uh, around two MB uh, scaffold, but when we used uh, high throughput sequencing uh, from Illumina and the other approach, and uh, we got the uh, scaffold size of uh, 40 MB, so you see the drastic improvement from 1 MB to 40 MB. In addition, you can also see the uh, collinearity or uh, linear order of uh, each chromosomes. So here in uh, this was this was visualized with the uh, IC data set. As I told you, uh, IC gives uh, physical proximity information for each chromosomes. So usually, um, if your chromosome is uh, the properly assembled and you would expect uh, some kind of diagonal pattern. So because the, the nearby uh, sequencing uh, region will give a better pattern. But if there is a, a misassembly or chimeric orders, you would get some kind of signal, something like this. So uh, with the Morex, I mean the version two, uh, you can see a very, a very complete neat pattern and you don't see any kind of uh, uh, high C differences. So this gives an impression that uh, the Morex version 2 uh, looks uh, better with the new technologies. In addition, uh, the, some kind of chimeric assemblies was also resolved with the new versions. So this is how uh, uh, the sequencing technologies constantly support to improve uh, genome assemblies. And now, <clears throat> again, uh, the new uh, game changer in genome assembly came last year. So we call it like a circular consensus long reach sequencing technology or CCS free technology. So this method is from uh, BackBio uh, platform. So uh, we, uh, it, it, it's also called as a hi-fi reads. Um, hi-fi means uh, high fidelity reads. So if you look at the library, I mean the sequencing method of this platform, 
uh, here you have a, a double standard genomic DNA and then the both end you can uh, ligate the smart bulb adapters and then with these adapters you can also add uh, DNA polymerase and anion primers. So this uh, polymerase activity like uh, uh, this entire uh, genomic fragment it just uh, amplifies or uh, polymerization can occur in the circular manner. So here uh, this polymerization can uh, run to the entire DNA make from fragment to seven to uh, 10 times. So we call it like seven to 10 passes. So each time uh, the same fragments can be sequenced and then you would get a sequence read something like this. So the finally all the sequence reads uh, will be combined to produce uh, consensus sequencing reads. Uh, we call these uh, hi-fi reads. So this, uh, uh, this kind of highly accurate uh, long read technologies uh, really uh, important for uh, genome assemblies, especially uh, larger genomes or highly complex genome. So uh, <clears throat> this, this technology also reduced the time record for genome assemblies. So this is one uh, simple example uh, that uh, the, the computational requirements as well as the time to assemble a single genotype. But here, this is a, a 5 giga genome, uh, this, this time based on the 5 giga genome. Uh, for uh, based on the Illumina short read data, uh, it usually takes four to six weeks uh, to assemble a single reference, single genome. And again, the four to six weeks, it, it also depends on the person who involved in here. If, if it is a well-trained bioinformatician, so he can do it in within four to six weeks. But a uh, new person, um, he, he also needs to spend more time. But with the long read technology, uh, now the genome assembly can be possible uh, within a week or uh, less than a week because if, if, if you work with uh, some small genomes like rice, uh, you can do it within a day. And now it is also possible to assemble a maize genome um, within a single day. So now it is uh, realized that uh, genome assemblies, genome assembly become simple and not any more uh, difficult. At the same time, uh, it's also realized that a single genome is not sufficient to represent entire uh, genomic diversity uh, because uh, the single reference genome represents only the single portion or subset of diversity uh, present in a species. And because uh, within the within the species, we have large proportion of uh, genomic structural variations. So for example, here uh, you have your reference genome and this uh, linear reference, I mean, uh, this chromosome can be divided into different uh, genomic region. And in one genotypes, uh, you have the sequence like this, but in other genotypes, you can have uh, one specific region in multi, multi copies. So here we see copy number variation. In other case, a particular genomic region can be deleted. So here we see uh, present substance variation. In addition, uh, you can also have uh, inversion. So where uh, the, the certain genomic regions can be flipped. So when you have this kind of uh, flip orientation, the regulatory space can be changed or uh, it can capture a set of co-adaptive alleles and that could also segregate as a single unit. So this also brings some functional innovation to some uh, specific or certain uh, genotypes. So due to these kind of uh, genomic variations, uh, it is realized that a uh, single reference genome uh, cannot really represent uh, the species diversity. So to address this issue, currently uh, the pan-genome concept was developed. So here, what is pan-genome? So pan-genome is, uh, a, a, the simple definition is a collection of all DNA sequence that occurs in a species. So pan-genome has a potential to capture full range of genetic diversity present in a species. Again, why do we have to capture full range of genetic diversity? Because uh, uh, you might have known that plant, a plant at intraspecies level show variation in uh, disease resistance or adaptation or metabolic production or in response to different environmental stimuli. So uh, if you want to understand this type of process, we have to have a better understanding of all uh, different uh, populations or uh, different representative populations. So uh, that's why the pan genome uh, got wide attention. And initially, uh, this pan genome concept was developed in uh, bacterial species, where they assemble different bacterial stains and 
they look for uh, genes and then uh, if some genes are present in all the strains and they call it they call it as a core genome and if some genes are present in some individuals or a few individuals uh, they call it as a dispensable or variable genome and still some genomes uh, some genes can be specific to single strains and they call it as a unique genes so here uh, in, in bacteria they they built a pan genome based on genes or like a gene based pan genome but this makes sense uh, for prokaryotes but but this uh, but uh, if you look at the eukaryote species like plants and animals uh, you have a large proportion of uh, intergenic space so here uh, genes based pan genome is uh, less sensible so people try to use the entire genomic region to identify core and uh, variable genomic region again um, you may also wonder why we have to uh, categorize as a core and variable uh, genomic region. So what kind of insight we can get it from them? Uh, the one simple uh, explanation would be like uh, the core genome uh, tend to have uh, genes that are responsible for uh, fundamental growth and development related process. Whereas uh, the variable genomic part uh, most likely have genes that are related to biotic or abiotic stress or environmental uh, response related genes. So this is one way to uh, narrow down some candidate genes uh, associated with uh, some abiotic or biotic stress. But this is the idea, but uh, still uh, you can also take much more information from this kind of uh, categories. All right, so to summarize uh, this talk, now uh, it is uh, clear that uh, creating a single reference genome is prerequisite for a crop genomic research because it opens wide opportunity for uh, trait mapping or gene cloning. And with the advancement in uh, long read sequencing technology, the genome assembly become very simple or feasible. And it also accelerates uh, the crop research. At the same time, it is also realized that a single reference genome cannot represent a species diversity. So uh, due to the genomic structural variations, um, it, it's really necessary to have a, a multiple reference quality genomes or multi a pan genome that represents a different uh, subpopulations, uh, which is, uh, this is another way to capture the full range of genetic diversity present in a species. And it is uh, sure that the pan genome will definitely increase our ability to connect different uh, genetic diversity to uh, different, uh, I mean, gen different genetic diversity to uh, phenotypes and also disease resistant and much more than that. Okay, so with that, uh, I would like to thank you and thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take any question. Thank you.